Hi everybody, my name is Mike Davis and I'm a professor of UAV technology at our local college. I'm also an FAA safety team representative. Now today we're going to talk about Class E airspace. This presentation will cover from a UAS perspective what Class E airspace is and how you can operate in it. While this may seem straightforward, but how Class E airspace is designated can be particularly confusing for drone pilots as well as manned pilots. But there's some good news. So by the end of this presentation, you will know what the different types are, how they affect your drone operation, and how to spot them on an aeronautical chart, and when you'll need FAA authorization to operate within them. Class Echo airspace generally begins where Class Golf ends and usually varies between 700 feet and 1200 feet above the ground level or AGL. Since the Class Echo airspace is not associated with an airport surface area, Part 107 operators do not require an air traffic control authorizations prior to flying in this type of Class Echo. Now this image, by the way, represents a profile or slide view of the Class E airspace. Now let's see how that looks on an aeronautical chart. It's important to remember that Class Echo airspace begins at 1200 feet AGL unless otherwise shown. When Class Echo begins at 700 feet above ground level, it is indicated by a magenta shading ring usually surrounding the airport. Now you might be wondering why you need to know about Class Echo airspace that starts at 700 to 1200 feet when most of the drone flights are limited to 400 feet. The FAA Small UES Rule, or Part 107.51, allows for drone flights to fly higher than 400 feet AGL in certain situations. If you are operating with a within a 400 foot radius of a structure, you can fly to the structure's uppermost limit plus an additional 400 feet. Now this can be very beneficial for a variety of UAS missions. For an example, inspecting a cell tower. Consider the example structure shown here. You could fly to a maximum altitude of 1,865 feet above ground level as long as you comply with all other parts of the small UAS rule, such as maintaining visual line of sight. In this example, flying at 1,865 feet means that you are operating in Class Echo airspace. And remember, Class Echo does not require an airspace authorization under Part 107. Now let's take a look at another type of Class Echo airspace surface class echo. This type of airspace causes the most confusion. The regulations clearly state that operations within the lateral boundary of surface area of class echo airspace designated for an airport require airport authorization. So what is surface class echo airspace and how do you know when it's designated for an airport? Simply put, it's Class Echo's airspace that extends down to the surface instead of the common 700 or 1200 feet above ground level. Now this category of airspace exists to add additional protection to arriving and departing aircraft. Now because of this, certain portions of surface Class Echo airspace require authorizations prior to flight. Now we're going to talk about three types of surface class echo airspace, echo 4, echo 3, and echo 2. Of course, only echo 2 requires airspace authorization. Through the next few slides, I'll walk you through the different types of surface class echo and how you can identify which type is in your area. Now we're going to start with class echo extensions. These exist to allow manned aircraft to make safe approaches to the runways in bad weather. But just remember that while Echo 4 and 3 don't require ATC authorizations, Echo 2 does. 
Echo 4 airspace is an extension to class delta or surface class echo or echo 2 airspace. Now I've highlighted green and red areas to help clarify what I'm talking about. This aeronautical chart images show an echo 4 extension in the green shaded area. The key to recognizing this as an echo 4 extension is the magenta dash lines that segregate the green shaded area from the red shaded area. But remember, echo 4 extensions do not require ATC authorizations. Now here's another example of an echo 4 airspace extension. Again, the green shaded areas represent echo 4 area while the red shaded area in this image signifies a class Delta Airport, meaning that it has a control tower. Like the previous example, the key information is the segregating line, this time a dash blue line, that segregates class Delta airspace from the Echo 4 area. As mentioned in the previous slide, operations in class 4 airspace do not require an airspace authorization. Now here's an example of an ECHO 3 extension. ECHO 3 extensions are associated with class Charlie airspace. Like ECHO 4, ECHO 3 extensions are segregated from the adjacent airspace. In this case, because the adjacent airspace is, cla is class Charlie, a solid magenta line is used. And like ECHO 4, operations in ECHO 3 airspace do not require an airspace authorization. Sometimes the extensions are not segregated from the ECHO 2 area. In this example you can see there is no dashed lines, dashed or solid, segregating the airspace. In this case the entire area requires an FAA authorization prior to flight. ECHO 2 airspace, including ECHO 2 extensions, require that you obtain an ATC authorizations through land sea or drop zone before you can fly. If you're new to the drone community and find FAA aeronautical charts confusing, the UAS facility maps can also be a great resource for helping you understand when you would need an airspace authorization. If the area you would like to operate in requires an airspace authorization, there will be a grid map associated to it. Now remember, these are not pre-approved areas, so you must receive an airspace authorization prior to operating in any of the classes airspace that are listed there. Now to illustrate how the two airspace depictions match up, I placed the aeronautical chart for Lake Tahoe Airport next to the UAS facility map for the same area. This example clearly shows that ECHO 2 area, indicated by the red shading, has a corresponding grid map associated with it and requires airspace authorization. The green shaded area is for ECHO 4 extension. We know ECHO 4 airspace because it's segregated from ECHO 2 airspace. And as you know, ECHO 4 airspace does not require an airspace authorization and therefore does not have a corresponding grid map associated with it. Thank you everybody. I hope this has been helpful to enhance your understanding of Class ECHO airspace. Now for more information about the FAA safety team and their programs, please check the FAA.gov website. Now I will be conducting other webinars directly related to drones, so be sure to check my personal website shown above on this slide for more information. We'll see you soon.